Okay, Bill, we're recording. Uh-huh. Bill, what's what's your name? Bill, actually, Toru Bill Nishimura. And uh, I was born in Compton in 1920. And then I moved to uh, El Segundo area. And then uh, in 1929, I moved to Longdale. Uh-huh. And that's where uh, <clears throat> my dad started to do the truck farming, raising cauliflower and Spanish brown onions. That was the main crop. And then uh, later, uh, other than that, it was spinach, cabbages, cucumbers, and string beans, many other types of uh, things and that was grown in uh, uh, Prado Ranch. And how did your dad first learn about the Carrada Ranch? Pardon? How did your dad first learn about the Carrada Ranch? Uh, that, see, the lease was up, came uh, in a Bishop Ranch, and Mr. Carrada, who owned the department store in Gardena, had this uh, sublease the land which is called the Crowder Ranch now, uh, which is bordered uh, by Manhattan Beach Boulevard, Prairie, and uh, during the time of the Compton, and now it's Marine, and the Dominguez Canal was the, oh, excuse me, 147th Street, and not the uh, <coughs> Marine. Anyway, that portion of the uh, approximately uh, 200 acres or so. Yeah, about 160 uh, about acres. 200 yeah. acres. Yeah. It was named uh, Carrara Ranch simply because Mr. Carrara subleased it from uh, Barger. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how much How much did your dad pay for the, the lease? For the uh, that portion, I do not know mm -hmm. what the uh, uh, lease was. However, during that time was depression, and Mr. Barger thought of us, and he said, okay, if you can't pay in cash, we'll let you raise sweet peas, and we'll harvest the sweet pea seeds. Mm -hmm. And he was very nice to us in that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you grew up, what schools did you go to when you grew up there? Uh, <clears throat> The first the grammar school I started was uh, Wiseburn. And then when we, I moved to uh, Lawndale, I started to Lawndale Central, and then to Lusinger High School. Mm -hmm. And I graduated from the high school uh, two years before the war started. And that was 1939. 39, right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And uh, of course, uh, uh, our parents forced us to go to the Japanese school. So uh, during the grammar school time, right after grammar school uh, got out, we went to the Glendale Japanese school and studied for a couple of hours every day, uh, Monday through Friday. After school? After school, right. And. When I graduated from uh, Londo Central, the high school required homework time, so we were unable to go to everyday class, so we went to Saturday class, which started from uh, 8.30 to 3 o'clock. Oh, all day. All day, yes. And that's how I grew up. Uh, at that time. And then when I graduated from high school, I stopped going to uh, Japanese school. So at the Japanese school, it was all ages that went there, right? Pardon? It was all ages of oh, students. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. at the from Japanese my school. kindergarten on to. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. And. Uh, Did they separate the kids in the room? Oh, by yes. Age? Uh -huh. We had a partition in the uh, class, classroom. And. Uh, my uh, first uh, <clears throat> Japanese school teacher, he was a student from Japan. 
uh, Hiroshima, Japan, mm -hmm. who was a student at the USC. And he taught us to, uh, because he uh, to raise the tuition for the school. Mm -hmm. And in 1935, I believe it was, he received his doctorate degree in education and he went to Japan. However, uh, during that uh, <clears throat> graduation, they had it in that, that cavernous coliseum. And it was hard for anybody to locate who's there. So we took our school banner, a huge school banner, and had it in the crowd. And so he said, oh, he recognized us right away where we were. So he could see oh, you in, at, in the Coliseum. at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we got, got on the truck and we went over there. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh -huh. And um, that was a huge event for us. Uh, <clears throat> And then uh, now, wasn't at, uh, wasn't his brother also teaching there? I thought you yes, said once. Yes, his brother was uh, uh, mostly for judo oh. instructor. However, he taught us. Oh, so it wasn't just Japanese language. You also learned judo in the class. No, no, no judo in the class. Oh, he taught judo elsewhere. Oh, okay. Uh, elsewhere. So. Okay. And so uh, he taught only. Uh, the language at the school, uh -huh. and uh, this the teacher is a uh, received a uh, doctor degree as uh, Gisaku Kawachi, mm -hmm. and his brother was Shunpaku Kawachi, mm -hmm. and then later on we acquired another teacher uh, <clears throat> who was very good at teaching. Uh, Onodera, Mrs. Onodera, and she had her own school in uptown area. Mm -hmm. However, she came to our school on Saturdays and taught us. Mm -hmm. uh, and these Issei teachers were very, um, what do you call this, uh, they just wanted us to learn the basics of the Japanese language. And so we were really, we had a good education in Japanese. Um, they say almost similar to the one, you know, that taught in the, uh, Jap in the homeland. Uh -huh. and, <clears throat> and so uh, I had a pretty good knowledge not only me, but the, all the East Amit uh, Nisais. See, all the other uh, <clears throat> school similarly had their teachers from Japan, so uh -huh. uh, Issei uh, tutors. Right. And <clears throat> one of the uh, the best in our uh, area was called the Kaoten Gakuen. Compton Japanese Language School and the Manita. They were the, the uh, first, uh, one and two, you know, uh, a couple of a good school mm -hmm. at that time. How, how many students did you have in your Lawn Oh, uh, in Lawn mm -hmm. it was, uh, we were considered a small school. Uh -huh. uh, perhaps about maybe 150 at, at the most 150 uh, 150 people. at the most i believe and then uh and how old were you when you would end that class? oh school yeah i started from uh 12 and up to uh 18. so when you were 18 you were done uh, 18 i quit the school and that was most uh, students hop on the farm most yeah, students would end yes, when they were about uh, 18. Yeah. and then uh uh, so, like I say, these Japanese school, really, uh, Japanese school teacher did a great favor for the U.S. during the war, mm -hmm. simply because 
Niseis had the knowledge, of, basic knowledge of the Japanese language. Right. And so they were quickly taken to MIS, Military Intelligence School, and they furthered their education there and was shipped to South Sea. Mm -hmm. See? So it so, helped in the war effort. Pardon? It helped in the war effort. Definitely. Oh. And they really did a good favor for U.S., mm -hmm. uh, these Issei tutors. Mm -hmm. Now, how much did it cost the family to send the... Pardon, how much it cost? How much did it cost? Uh, I believe it was about $6 a month or so. For each student? Oh, uh, each student. Okay. I believe it was... Uh, that, it wasn't too expensive. Well, of course, that money was really... You couldn't find a penny up drug yeah. any place. Yeah. Loaf of bread was three cents. Right. Uh, and gasoline was ten cents a gallon. Right. This was during the Great Depression. Yeah, Depression, right. right. Uh, so six dollars was a pretty big money then. Now, in the classroom, was the teacher very strict? Would they do like some teachers and wrap your knuckles oh, with a ruler? Oh, definitely. Strict. Oh, yes. We learned the discipline. Uh -huh. Oh, my gosh. Uh -huh. What would be the punishment if you got punishment, in trouble? Right. And parents didn't say anything. What, what it, would the it teacher... Was for their own good. Uh -huh. <laughs> what would the teacher do to punish you if you got in trouble? Well, they did uh, not a corporal punishment, uh -huh. but talking to them. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. They used to tongue lash at you. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. They weren't afraid uh -huh. because they were out to teach us something. Right. Uh -huh. So we learned from them. <laughs> yes. Well, of course, the public school was that way too. Right. Oh, right. yes. I, at grammar school, I was working on the you know, ruler. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, yes. It was, you know, I feel, I still feel we need that, you know, uh, what is the uh, punishment, like the, spanking, the, and, uh, um, you know, yeah, yeah. but the, they don't, they can't do anything. Teacher can't do it right. because they'll be sued. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Now, Bill, do you remember when the school building? It was originally in oh, El. It yes. was in El Segundo uh -huh. originally, yes. right? It, the school building was originally El Segundo uh, Japanese School. Right. Uh, and of course. I uh, was learning, uh, I, my first Japanese class was at El Segundo, uh -huh. in the same school building. And then, the, uh, our parents felt that uh, we need a school nearby, so they could go there every day. Not, you know, uh, once a week or so, see? Right. When I was small, when we were small. And so they moved that school to Longdale. You know how they moved it? Did they move oh, yes. the truck? Oh, yes. Oh, Mr. Uh, Kohler. He's the, well, in fact, his son was the same rate as I. Uh -huh. uh, his name was Clifford Kohler. Uh huh. And um, they moved, the, you know, how? They moved most of the house in Credo Ranch from, uh, you know, El Segundo. Uh, and they... uh, another house mover was Mr. Nelson. He mm. was uh, in the. Um, Bay Area, uh, around this area, mm -hmm. and he moved part of the, uh, you know, other people, you know, home over there in Crater Ranch. Did they use a truck? Oh, yes, they used the, uh, well, uh, uh, the larger home, they used a, oh, a huge plank, uh, I don't know, it's, and they had it all the way under the house, you know, a few of them, mm -hmm. and had the wheels on there, and they told it, you know, and some, and like, uh, uh, this uh, <clears throat> Japanese school that was uh, more or less uh, was on the bed of the truck and oh. he brought it over mm -hmm. because inside was empty see so they put a crossbar on that oh, so that it won't rock yeah. and had that long timber you know on, and he brought it over now, uh, in the in the building, did they have like a, a wood burning stove to keep the kids warm? Was oh yes, a wood burning stove. Yes, mm -hmm. we had that. Uh -huh. And was it like a regular classroom with a chalkboard? Yes, we had on? a chalkboard. Yes, mm -hmm. we had all that. Uh -huh. And uh, we had to learn uh, 
the kanji, the you know Chinese characters, mm -hmm. and that was very difficult. Mm -hmm. And this Chinese character, when you read it single, it the sound is different. When you see, when you have that, uh, that compound uh, characters like two and more, two or more, mm -hmm. then the sound of the character is different. However, the word itself has the same meaning. Mm -hmm. And so it was really difficult, but these teachers just pondered it into us. Mm -hmm. And so, like I say, Nisei had a good education in mm -hmm. Japanese, so they were they helped, you know, right away. Now, do you know, you, you may have been already part of the internment, but do you know when the old school building was torn down or what happened to it? No, I do not know when it was torn down. See, when I got, when I was released from the camp from Crystal City, Texas in 47, mm -hmm. my friend took me around the farm and my home was still there. On the Carrada Ranch. <laughs> On the Carrada Ranch. I'll be. Uh, the old house was still standing. Uh, 40, uh, summer of 47. But, it, it was there, still standing there. But was the school gone then? Yes, I didn't see the school. Okay. Uh, I didn't see the school. and So it uh, could have been moved. Uh, pardon? It could have been moved instead it of torn down. It could have been moved, yes. Uh -huh. But that same area is now an American you know, a public school. Right, there. Roosevelt School. Oh, I see. Yes, I uh, went there when, oh, I, was, when I was a I junior see. high. Uh -huh. Now it's a grammar school. Oh, I see. Uh, I, I noticed that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that school wasn't there when I got out there, though. Mm -hmm. you know, when I got in 47. So it was likely either demolished or moved uh -huh. during right, the war. Right, right. Uh -huh. So somebody yeah. could be living in that as a house right now and not know what it was. That's true. <laughs> 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 Uh, yes, that's true. Uh, did you manage, uh, uh, or do you know of any of the other Karata Ranch families that saved anything other from that school? I know you have a couple of photographs from it, but was there any books? Oh, you mean or... up under this uh, public school? No, I mean from the Japanese language school. Oh, library so you... Is there any old papers and school well, books? Well, I have, if you, my sister was there, yeah, and there's a nut, well, of course, how many now? That's quite a few, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah. Those kids were so small, you know, they're uh -huh. all, all yeah, I could recognize them at the reunion. Well, I mean, Bill, any, what, do you know if any old books, oh, books. survived? Mm, no, I don't have any, but you know what happened? We were all scared. I was scared, see, when the war started. Mm -hmm. That, it, in fact, you know, FBI came over, see? And so we just burned everything. Ah. Uh -huh. It was a shame, though, you know, we burned everything. Even the school materials. Uh -huh, all the things. I think that would have been a very good, you know, thing to have right now. Wow. Uh-huh. And all the wow. you know, uh, Japanese records we had, we just burned it up. All the school records were uh, burned. Oh, yes. Everything burned it up. Just out of fear at the uh -huh. start of the war. Through fear uh, that we might be, you know, in, uh, Punish somehow. Punish. Yeah, right. Yeah. Punish. Wow. Uh -huh. But you did manage to save those those two photographs. Yes. Uh, well, few people, you know, uh, what you call this, uh, they went out to Utah and all. So those people didn't burn their thing. They took it with them because, you know, nobody would check that, see? Right. See? But, uh, like my case, my dad was involved, with, you know, so FBI right. came over and, oh, they took the drawer out and emptied everything mm. on the floor to find something, you know, valuable. Yeah, uh, like evidence or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So mm. we, we, uh, you know, in, in, in our household, we burned practically everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so that the FBI would, you know. Yeah. It wouldn't be uh, held yeah. in whatever as a crime or something. Oh, it was really scary yeah. uh, at that time. Oh, yes, we were really scary. Uh. Well, it was April when Pardon? it was April of 1942 when the Japanese from the farm uh -huh. had to go to Santa Anita. Right, right. Uh -huh. They had to go to Santa so Anita. So from December uh -huh. 7th, 1941, uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
till April uh, 11, 1942. You have just a few months to, to either be prepared or to worry or whatever you were doing. So that was a, a really scary time to live scary, on the ranch. That was a really scary time. After we got in the camp, we were more relaxed. You know? Right. It was relaxing. However, you know, uh, uh, when the war came about, you know, the uh, Roosevelt time, they had a WPA camp right on the, uh, where there's a uh, El Camino uh, Park there. Right, the along the park. And then these people who were out of work were stay, stay there. And, <clears throat> and what they did was that they came over to our, you know, ranch and harvest our, you know, produce, see? Right. And in turn, we did not have any money, so we gave them the produce to them. So it was food for right. work. Uh, for exchange of labor. Right. And that's what we did, uh, you know, at that time. And there, like I say, you know, you remember that uh, building there, when the war started, the communication uh, corps came in and took that uh, building of course, there wasn't any WPA at that time anyway, you know, and I, that building was empty. Uh -huh. And so, communication court took over, and, it, you know, private road, uh, it's Dodi now. Right. We had the telephone, I mean, uh, electricity pole. And so they would come on and string that, you know, wire on it, they climb up the pole and put up the line. And then, you know, they uh, take it off and another group comes in and do the same thing. And it was a sort of a training, you know, uh, place uh, during the war. I mean, the first part of the war mm -hmm. at Crater Ranch. And I used to give uh, these, uh, you know, <clears throat> soldiers hitchhiking to Lawndale and, you know, mm -hmm. take them to the stores and things like that. And then became the, uh, you know, we, we were only able to travel five mile radius, see. And so we were just stopped, anyway, we couldn't go anything. However, these uh, truck, you know, haulers, they got the special, you know, <clears throat> privilege, and they were able to haul their goods to the seventh and ninth market. Right. Uh, for the, what we uh, harvested, see. Right. And, so that was the uh, uh, thing at that time, and then when uh, in 1942, March, the last week of March, government said that we will be able to travel wherever we wanted to go, Northern California, wherever, you know, and outside the state. And so at that time, uh, I decided to go to Ivanhoe where, you know, my uh, relative had a farm there. And 99 was a division, dividing line. West of 99 was the military zone, and east was a non-military. So I thought maybe I wouldn't have to go to the assembly center. And so I went there, and about two months later, we were, you know, the evacuation notice came up, and so we were, we evacuated, uh, I went there, uh, like I say, you know, in March, uh, last part of March, and then I was evacuated in uh, August, August, and we were the last, you know, group from the California to, I mean, to leave California, mm -hmm. and during the trip to uh, uh, Poston, the shades were down. Well, of course, we started from the afternoon. It was all pitch dark. Now, we didn't know where we were being taken. They didn't tell us. <coughs> and then, when we got there, we were at the Parker Station, and we found out that we were at the you know, Indian Reservation there. Mm -hmm. And when I got there, when I... When I got up from the uh, bus, I sank about this much, simply because the earth was moved. Uh, uh, that area was all mesquite trees. Oh. 
So they had to take, you know, the bulldoze all over the street trees all so the ground was so really soft. Uh -huh. and, so, and it was dusty and hot. I thought, oh my gosh, it was hot. And the first thing I did when I got in the camp was put the straw in the, in the bag for mattress. Uh -huh. That was the first thing I remembered. And then I was recruited, you know, for the kitchen. And so I uh, was a group head. We had uh, uh, two groups, uh, <clears throat> which I had, uh, I don't know, about six or seven crews, uh, you, know, you know, members to the crew. And I was ahead, you know, uh, for that which I received $19, that was the top pay, $19. See, and the pay was 1916, and then uh, I went up down to uh, 14 and $12, I think. It was uh, greater than that order. Uh, <clears throat> I stayed uh, as a cook for about uh, half a year, and then there, there came a you know a opening at the fire department, and you know fire department is very nice. You work twenty four hours and you get two days off. Yeah. <laughs> and so I love that. See, yeah. so I was looking for and they came in uh, an opening. Yeah. And so I became a fire. I got in the fire department and became a first engineer there, and. Uh, I, I also received nineteen dollars at the fire department. Oh, excellent! Uh -huh. And the one big fire that I remember we fought was at Camp Two, and that's the, the oh, it happened a windy night, mm -hmm. and uh, we was, uh, you know every camp had a hatchery and raised chicken. Oh, see chicken, and and so. This brooder somehow tipped over, you know, with the wind blowing like that, and cut the straw oh, yeah. on fire. Yeah. And the barracks said, oh, it lit up the you know, area of sky. We were at Camp 3, and this happened in Camp 2. And we could see the, the oh, bright sky, see. And at that time, we were, I was on the, uh, you know, on the ship. And we were just waiting, you know, we were sure that they were going to call us to come. But we had to wait for that, uh, you know, call. And mm -hmm. Camp 1 and Camp 2 were already there fighting this uh, blaze. And then they couldn't handle us, so they called us. And we went there, and the Chief Evans, he's a Caucasian, he was a farmer in L.A., but he was working, you know, and he said, we got to do this, uh, throw, uh, you know, fire to hydrant. See, there is a two-way two way of fighting the fire, fire to hydrant or a hydrant to fire. So, in this case, we had to go to the fire first and take all the holes, enough holes down, and then the truck will run to the hydrant and put it on and then open the fire. Mm -hmm. And so, we did the uh, fire to hydrant. And they, the Camp 2 and Camp 1, were fighting with the wind. You know, they were, you know, the wind was blowing that way and they were shooting, you know, this way. That's why the building will burn one after another. Can't stop it. And so our chief said, we got to fight against the, you know, wind. So we went, you know, from the and we went against the wind, see. And so the amber just comes off. <laughs> And many had the same, you know, vibe rolls and everything, and just, you know, bird spot in the face. Yeah. But we finally, you know, uh, <clears throat> stopped their fire by, you know, going the opposite way. It was dangerous. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But anyway, um, I heard this chief got a commendation for that, you know, doing, you know, uh, going against the wind. Uh -huh. And so we finally quenched the fire. And. <clears throat> That was the uh, uh, most exciting time I had <laughs> when I was in the post well, party part. Yeah. Yes. Now, Bill. Oh, yeah. And once we 
flip the truck over. <laughs> oh my God, that was something too. Uh -huh. It's a gravel road. So. Right. And then just skidded and flipped over. Yeah. You know, that was something. Speaking of a road, you were talking about the uh, old road at the Carrada Ranch. You had to charge money to get on it so you could pay for the upkeep of the road. From? You had to charge money for trucks as they came on the Carrada Road. Oh, yes, yes. Uh huh. We charged the haulers. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know how much it was, but all the. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, truck owners who were uh, go, uh, using this private road in Carter Ranch had to pay a fee simply because that is a adobe road and uh, it was impossible un unless the gravel was put mm -hmm. on the road. And Did you have a gate or a chain across it? No, no, we didn't have any gate or anything of that nature. Uh, and so what we did was uh, there were a few uh, uh, truck owners in uh, Prado Ranch, and so we asked them to go to Hollywood Hills and get that gravel, and we used to uh, spread that gravel all every two or three years, mm -hmm. and and that's the way uh, we. You know, kept up the private road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now uh, another another question, Bill, was when when you had to go leave Carrada Ranch. Was there crops that were just left there? Yes. I had a cabbage patch. Uh huh. Uh, which uh, my sister said uh, the Chinese uh, uh, people came over and uh, bought that. Uh, you know. <clears throat> produce, but uh, uh, I'm not too sure about that. Anyway, like that, you know, the, uh, some people had a chance to sell it. Uh, sell their, their yeah. produce before they right, had to go? Right, um, before, before we left. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And from Crowder Ranch, all about five or six families moved out, out of the state and went to Utah, Idaho, and Colorado area. Uh -huh. uh, but. Uh, and the rest, well, I moved to Central California, and the rest all right. went to Santa Anita Assembly Center. Mm. Yeah. What do you think ever happened to all the old homes? Uh, I don't know. When uh, Barger sold that place, I think they just demolished them. Knocked them all down. Uh, yes, I think mm -hmm. so. I think that was it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now it's just a memory. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, in those days we had only the cesspool for uh, you know garbage and you know, right. and so uh, I kind of feel that uh, they had to. I don't know how they they filled the thing up. I guess I think. anyway. Uh, during that uh, stay at uh, uh, Crater Ranch, I remember digging uh, two cesspools. Oh. I don't know how deep it was. Uh, well, it was pretty deep, but uh, we were able to shovel it up and throw that dirt out, so, yeah. you know, uh, I don't know. Anyway, and then after we had that uh, hole dug, then we, what you call it, uh, put the uh, board on there, you know, right. and so that it won't come. Right. And that's how we managed to <clears throat> dispose our dishwasher, you know, dish it was sanitation. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Those uh, waters. Uh, Did when when you were growing the crops and the produce? Uh huh. I bet there was a lot of trading with your neighbors and in the community. Like training, trading. training is that? No, trading. Trading. Yeah. No. Well. We used to, yes, you're right, you're right. Uh, we used to give our, you know, uh, some you know, vegetable that they didn't have, you know, and they'll give it to us. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did that. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And we probably started. and probably outside the ranch, too, some of the Lawndale neighbors or Gardena neighbors, you know, if they, uh, had, if they had eggs or something, you would uh, well, trade. Well, I remember we raised the uh, corn, uh -huh. and uh, Eric Peterson, Peterson had a... Uh, oh, the dairy. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
I you gave, me, you know, it gave us some milk, you know, yeah. In, in, yeah right. for that stock. Right. Yeah. That was up in Lawndale on uh, oh, yeah. oh, you Compton remember, Boulevard. Right? Is up oh, by, yeah, by I Freeman. Yeah. yeah, he was a mechanic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he turned mechanic again we had that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. My gosh. <laughs> well, how many people... <laughs> How many people on the ranch had uh, either a car or a truck or something? Oh, uh, there were a few, you know, sort of well-to-do people there, uh, yeah. you know, wealthy. Uh, well, like, uh, well, I'll count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Fourteen mm -hmm. farmers there. <laughs> yeah, other people just had a horse. <laughs> yeah, or something. I know the Teredas said they had a horse for uh, plowing. The Teredas said they had a horse only. Oh yeah, some had you know a uh, team, team horse. They call it, you know for when they do the plowing. Mm -hmm. That was nice, you know. And uh, we only had one horse, mm -hmm. but we had the tractor. Yeah. Uh, you know that old Fordson tractor. Mm -hmm. We had that, uh, but. Uh, most of them had the two horses and then their things. Mm -hmm. And each farmer had their own <coughs> reservoir. Right. Uh, and like I said before, we went through that uh, Dominguez Channel right. and brought off the, that, that the craw that you know, yeah. they call it, and we put it in the reservoir right. and started to dig the holes. Yeah. And, then you and the flood. water started to leak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I came back to get you. Yeah, we had really a, a rough time. Right. Oh, yes. um, I bet it was pretty quiet out there. You, pardon? I bet it was pretty quiet living out there. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then uh, we had goldfish in the uh, pond. Uh -huh. So the heron used to come over. I don't know where you know, heron had, you know, where, uh, nesting. But anyway, they used to come once in a while and just, you know, with a long leg, looking at the team. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh my God, had a field day. Oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh my God. Did you ever, I, I know this was a little bit later in time, but did you ever see any other animals out there in that oh, time? Did you ever see any other animals running around oh, at that yes. time? Black, I mean, red, uh, red winged blackbird. Oh, oh wow. my gosh, it was full of it. Uh -huh. Because within the uh, uh, reservoir, there is the Natulis. You know, yeah. And they go in there. Right. Oh right. my God. You don't see any more red winged black blackbirds anymore. Not too many. Not in no. this area no yeah. more. Yeah. No, I don't know where they disappeared to. Right. You got to have the water. <clears throat> and another bird was a kill there. Oh, yes. Kill there. And they're really fighters. They nest there, you know, uh, on the ranch. Right. And when the horse goes to cultivate, all oh, they just spread their wings, and you know, right. and go, and the horse just just go backwards, you know. Right. They get scared. Right. Ah. Uh, oh, they were really a, a good mother, I tell you. Did you have other pets like dogs and cats? Oh, I had the rabbits. Oh, uh huh. I had rabbits, and I have for a while I had the quails too. Oh. Ah, uh, and. Uh, uh, of course, uh, chicken, mm -hmm. and so we had fresh eggs every day. Mm -hmm. Actually, the farmers were pretty good, you know, uh, during the depression. Uh, <clears throat> the saying is because we had the fresh vegetables, and we fished a lot in Hermosa Redondo, right. and that. oh my gosh, oh. you're living the, better back then. <laughs> oh my gosh, this you know perch. Yeah. Oh, like gosh, yeah. really, it's just, oh, so, you know, we hardly were skunked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was some, you know, time. Yeah. Did you ever, uh, was there ever any crime? Oh, crime? Uh, crime, I can't remember. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. uh, one time, a taxi was, uh, you know, uh, one winter, a taxi was stuck right beside our ranch. And when I got there, the, uh, you know, police or FBI were already there, but the cab driver was shot. And, uh, and the, whoever shot him, you know, just walked away. 
Was that on Prairie? Uh, uh, no, it was on uh, Compton Boulevard. Oh. Compton Boulevard. And right beside her, and these photographers, you know, in those days they had a bulb, and one time shot, they throw that bulb away and put in a new one. Yeah. Ratchet. Full of them over there, my ratchet. Put the yeah. bulbs in there. Yeah. Yeah. We had to clean all that oh. out. <laughs> oh, boy. I remember that. Uh. But other than that crime, well, well, Black Dahlia and all that, you know, yeah. you hear them, but oh, yeah. uh, actually in uh, my area, uh, that was the only one I could remember. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yes. Robert Dyer. I still remember his name. He was a cross guard at one of the Hawthorne area grammar school. Mm -hmm. And he killed one girl. And you know what happened? FBI and all were, you know, looking for, and he even went there to, you know, sort of, you know, help looking for them. And I don't know how they found that he, you know, suspicious about him, but anyway, they found something suspicious about Robert Dyer. And so he started questioning and he admitted. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that was really something. Mm. And another thing, uh, no, wait a minute now. That was, that was it, I think, you know. Uh, so yeah. no one was, no one would go into your barn or steal? Uh, uh, you didn't have that kind of problem? Mm, well, vegetables they used to steal. They used to steal vegetables. Uh, you know, the cauliflower, Yeah. the leaves are on. But uh, when the cauliflower form, the sun hit, it gets brown. Right. So we had to tie those leaves up and tie a nut. Right, and blanch it. And you know what they do, these one? They go in and just get the flowers only. They don't get, cut the whole thing. They get the cauliflower only, you know? Yeah. And so when we start to harvest, we look at it, nothing in there. <laughs> oh my God, you uh, know, that used to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that used to happen. Probably close to the road. Uh -huh. yeah. Right. Yeah. But um, other than that, yeah, it was a pretty smooth, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I, I didn't see any, you know, riots or anything yeah. of that nature, no. Would uh, you say that when you were young there, uh -huh. were, you, were you mostly uh, interacting with the, with the young and old? Were you, were you mostly speaking both Japanese and English, or just mostly Japanese, or just mostly English? Or did I speak mostly? Yeah, mostly with the people there. Were you speaking in Japanese or in English mostly? Well, i tell you one story about my case. When I was going to grammar school, my English was very poor, simply because my parents, well, my dad spoke, you know, conversation uh, fairly well, but my mother didn't speak not at all. And so at home, we spoke nothing but Japanese. Mm -hmm. see? And so my English was very bad. And I even flunked one year, uh, one semester. I was held back. And then when I was held back, teacher gave me an advice that uh, if, if I, when I'm reading something and if I can't understand, she told me to read it over and over until you do understand what you're reading. And that gave me the, you know, uh, <coughs> strength mm -hmm. to learn. And I was able to graduate from uh, uh, I mean, uh, London Central mm -hmm. and to be accepted at uh, Lusinger High School. Mm -hmm. And at Lusinger, I, uh, took the math science course and took all the, you know, mathematics and chemistry and all, right. all that, and trigonometry. So I went all through that, solid geometry, algebra. And I was fortunate enough to graduate the school at top fifth of the class of 125 uh, uh, students, I think. Mm -hmm. And that was the largest class of, at that time. And we had about a uh, student body, about a little over a thousand. I, I mm -hmm. think it was a little over a thousand at that time. Did, yeah. did you remember, uh, we both know Bud Utter, 
Pardon? Leonard Utter, Bud? Oh, Leonard Utter, sure. You, you knew him in school, right? Oh, yeah. You know, he was such a, he was a person that was never, you know, going out drinking wine or rowdy type at all. Mm -hmm. He was himself. And I was surprised that he didn't, you know, talk, converse very much at school. But by gosh, he's union head. Yeah. I was surprised to hear that. Yeah. And he is a good speaker. Yeah. Oh, he is really a good speaker. All right. He uh, blossomed. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. <laughs> I was really surprised at right. that. I, I even told him that, you know. Right. You were so quiet and kind of being a union head. I thought, you know, oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I, I, see, like, he didn't talk too much, so I wasn't, you know, so, you know, I, didn't, I wasn't too close, but I knew of him, you uh -huh, know, being uh -huh. that way. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, Bill, when you go by the old farm area now, uh -huh. if you drive by there, you you imagine it um, just the way it was. You can look at it and go, "I remember this just the way it was." <coughs> I just, you know, occasionally I stop over there uh -huh. and just reminisce. You know, oh my gosh, that was. Yeah, you it, can still see really all the old houses. Right. It, it is really nice, you know. Yeah. Many times I did that. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes. Oh, it was something wrong. It's too bad there's not a plaque or something that remembers yeah, that. You know? right. It's all forgotten mm -hmm. except for the uh, recent yeah, reunion, right. which was a good thing. Uh -huh. Yeah. And hopefully the articles come out. Yeah, uh, when Barger owned that, you know, if he had some kind of plaque there, you know, yeah. it would have been yeah. 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 But like you, Jim, if you if that wasn't for you, you, I don't think Crowder Ranch could be known, you know, to all the people in Gardena area. No. Well, it's good to keep things alive. I'm so happy that you were interested in this. Yeah. I, I'm really... And then, especially the, you know, uh, uh, Beverly. Yes. Oh my God! Oh, it was Different wonderful. For, it was a wonderful reunion. Yeah, was it nothing? Yeah, I, I was, I was just amazed. I really, <laughs> um, Beverly and Hideki. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I, I can thank them enough. Right. Oh, right. oh my gosh, gee, well, they did a tremendous thing to, you know, for us and then the, you know, the Crowder Ranch. Right. Yeah. All right. I hope they do it again. <laughs> mm. And I'm just hoping, you know, other area too, you know. You know, I hope somebody will come up and, you know, do mm -hmm. something about it. Mm -hmm. There were so many communities all over. Right, right. Oh, yeah, so yeah. all over. It gets lost and especially, to time. Especially, you know, uh, uh, they call it Johnson Ranch. It was uh, Crenshaw there right through up to uh, Manchester. Mm -hmm. And on both sides of Crenshaw, called the Johnson Ranch. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was a huge ranch there. Yeah. Oh my God, and I I just wonder if there is anybody you know who would stand up you know and yeah. You um, never know; they may do another reunion. Yeah, I hope I hope somebody would come. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know how many uh, you know people were there. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can imagine Crater Ranch was only that much. Right, right. But Johnson Ranch was a mm -hmm. huge ranch. You know, when, when you were also telling me, before I forget, Bill, that, that half of the families or, or a portion of the families came from El Segundo. Yes, and the other came from uh, uh, present uh, location at Alondra Park right. and Alondra Golf Course. Right. They were farming in that area. Was and, that and called the Alondra Park Farm? Uh, uh, no, I don't know what they called over there. However... They had to move because the county said they were going to build a uh, golf course right. at that time. Right. And it took almost 20 years after to yeah. have it, you yeah. know, mature, uh, come about. So. Right. But anyway, that's why they had to move from there. And do you know which families those were that were oh, living? Oh, lived over there? Yeah. Well, uh, there was the Fujikawa's. Muranakas, Iwatas, and uh, 
I believe it was Kubo's there too. Um, Hayashi, I believe it was. Uh huh. So something like that. Well, I'll ask Beverly. Maybe we could find out if they had a separate name for what yeah, that was. Uh -huh. uh, so, well, like they say, you know, that uh, Manhattan Drive, that was all Dolby. Right. So in wintertime, it was impossible. Yeah. Because nobody took care of that road. Right. See, it wasn't our, uh, you know, we didn't care about that. Yeah. See, we just wanted the Credit Ranch private road there only. Right. And so we took care only of that, see, mm -hmm. and the rest of it. And then uh, uh, during the winter time, it used to rain. Oh my gosh, you know, every winter crowded ranch would be flooded. Mm -hmm. And so the uh, ranchers thought, you know, they had to have some kind of drainage or else they, they won't be able to grow anything during winter time. And so my you know, nobody wanted their, you know, the ditch in the ranch, see. But my dad felt for the other farmers and said, okay, dig, you know, uh, the ditch right beside our, you know, ranch. And so when it rained, we, our ranch is flooded, okay? Yeah. But it won't be cleared until all the other, you know, wa water subsided. Because the water is always gushing to, into our ranch, see? And so we had to wait for the last one to get our, you know, things up. But my dad was that way, see? Mm -hmm. he, he thought about the other thing, you know. So, unfortunately, there was that Dominguez uh, canal right. there. Right. And we just <laughs> had the water, you know, dumped in there. And you said that you saw the time when they when they paved the Dominguez Channel. Oh, yes. Uh, when I was there, uh, they had to, um, uh, they didn't pave at that time, but they scraped it oh, okay. so that uh, you know, uh, later on they would be able to pave. Mm -hmm. But anyway, what they did was, uh, it was such an angle that the bulldozer can't do it by itself. It'll flip over. So they had another bulldozer boulders on the bank, top portion, and they had a cable to that uh, uh, another uh, <clears throat> bulldozer, and that's how they, they you know, uh, made the, uh, uh, slanted the, uh, what you call, mm -hmm. uh, the ch channel, mm -hmm. and made it uh, more usable, and, and not to get plugged up. Right, uh, right. And that was the that I remember, that was done in uh, around uh, in the 40s, I think it was, mm -hmm. uh, around that time, mm -hmm. for 1940, yeah. Uh, the other thing, though, <laughs> that's about it, I guess. I well, that's a good story. <laughs> that's a good story. Well, oh yes. When we planned the sweet peas. Yeah. Oh, on uh, Prairie Avenue, there was a store. Every farmer had the store over there. That is the one that's facing Prairie Avenue. Mm -hmm. So we, we were at the end. See, we were at the corner of Prairie and uh, Compton, see. Right. And so, I had my first store there, and the Fuji Calls had the next one, and you know, like uh, Sakoi and Honda's had it, all the way up to uh, Manhattan Beach Boulevard. And that was selling the flowers? And a bunch, of, five cents a bunch. Uh huh. Was to sell. And the passerby would just stop there and eat their lunch and look at the, you know, all the flowers on the crowd of ranch there. Oh, it was something. Yeah. Well, you didn't have the whole farm planted with just sweet peas, did you? No, just we didn't portion. plant the whole farm with sweet peas. Okay. But we still raised vegetables. Okay. <coughs> just a part of uh -huh. it. Uh, so Barger said, okay, uh, you have so many acres, so you get so many pounds of seed. Yeah. And that was it. That's how they, you know, divide us up. See? Right. Uh, so bigger, larger acres people, had, they had the, the, uh, more seed. 
Yeah. So more larger acreage of sweet peas. Uh huh. That way. And he he brought the thrasher from Lompoc and to thrash the old, you know. Uh huh. Oh, well, that was really some sight. Oh, I bet. Uh huh. Oh my God. And sweet peas smell good too. Huh? Sweet peas smell good too. That's right. Oh, when that's blooming, wow. Mm -hmm. Gee. Oh, yeah, it was really good smell. Oh boy. Uh, but anyway, the passerby used to just stop and just why look at the garden. Yeah. It looked like I, that. I know. Uh huh. <laughs> it, 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 this was it. Yeah. This was it. Sure. Oh. And then <coughs> when the sweet pea dries up and becomes a sea. Right. Oh, early in the morning we used to get that, you know, a site, you know, and then cut it up. Mm -hmm. And we make a huge, you know, like a haystack. Mm -hmm. And we left it there with Dodger, uh, Dodger to come in and do it. But you know what? If there are some bad people, they could just let a fire. Yeah, burn it all up. Yeah. That never happened. Mm. People were sensible in, in those days, yeah. You can't do that anymore. Uh, some kids would say, yeah. hey, there's a but bonfire. Nothing happened. Mm -hmm. You're just a match everything's gone mm -hmm. but really you know people were nice mm -hmm. in those days mm -hmm. yeah yeah i wished i was a, l a little bit uh, ahead of my time and got to see more of it <laughs> it was a little too late for me <laughs> and you know uh, like um uh, <clears throat> uh <clears throat> trick-or-treat time yeah we never had any problem uh-huh yeah Never had any problem. You probably trick or treated at my old house when you were a kid. <laughs> oh, yeah. You probably went and knocked on my grandparents' door. Oh, I yeah. But, but I realized in those that people were sensible. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, they were really sensible. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. Did you ever go over to the Trader's house? Pardon? Did you ever visit the Trader's at their house? Tra Sam and Amico and. Oh, well, you know what? We had Helms Bakery coming to our area, uh -huh. Perfection Bakery coming, uh -huh. and then we had Fishman, and then we had uh, uh, what you call Japanese, uh, you know, uh, uh, food sales. We come to the ranch. We didn't have to go out and buy anything. Oh, and. Milk too, they delivered uh -huh. to us. Everything was coming mm -hmm. to you. But I didn't drink uh, very much milk because, you know, it was a uh, depression time. Mm. Yeah. But did you ever visit your neighbors, the, the Teredas? Uh, uh, visit the neighbors? Yes, Teredas. Um, well, of course, we didn't visit the neighbor, but we got together at the Japanese school. Oh, okay. That uh, was sort of like the hall. Yes, the right. Uh huh. And so. We had programs, you know, at Japanese school, and all the crack branch people would go there and meet. So there'd be, besides the school and the instruction, there'd be parties and things? Oh, that... parties? Uh, uh -huh. Well, um, actually, you know what? Birthday parties, Christmas parties. It was depression time. Hmm. Oh, no. I. I can't remember having any birthday party when I was growing up. Mm. And so that kind of sunk into me and kids inside, forget everything, you know, birthday thing. Hey, Dad, you forgot the birthday party, you know. It isn't that important to me because I wasn't, you know. You didn't grow up with uh, it. Uh, I didn't have that, uh, uh -huh. uh, you know, experience. Uh -huh. And but so, but did you say at the school though they pardon? you did you say that at the old school they did have some other kind of parties or oh yes we had uh, you know uh, like uh, once year we had a picnic uh, you know uh, uh, like athletic uh, events uh, at mm -hmm. the Japanese school or mm -hmm. no I, I take it back at the Brighton Beach oh at Brighton Beach uh, uh -huh. Terminal uh -huh. Island Brighton mm -hmm. Beach and then um, like New Year's. Oh, that was fabulous, New Year. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, they were all up. Mochizuki pounding. Yeah. You know, they could. Right. Oh my gosh, that and you know, 
the herring uh have you even eat the uh, have you ate the cousin of the herring uh, you know uh, eggs no <laughs> that is so expensive now uh-huh in those days they made so much dead to throw it away ah and right nowadays and you know uh and new year's or even now it's like a gold it's so like caviar <laughs> caviar yeah so expensive uh-huh well were those were those things held at the school or was that a bright you, you know, well in the uh new year's we all had individual you know made the family made in New Year, we went one house to another. Oh, okay. Okay. And get so drunk, you know. <laughs> but they walk, see, because right. the private was so close together. Right. So they just tumble over. Oh, oh you name it. Oh, oh, my gosh, they used to. You they know, drinking, home, drinking home, sake? Homebrew sake. Oh. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so the old guys would be all tipsy. Oh, my yeah. God. They used to, uh, you know, Make that homebrew. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh my God. Oh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> uh, but like me, uh, you know, we we used to have a winter bay yeah. at the Coverdale Beach. Uh huh. And then <clears throat> we, uh, of course, uh, you know, if you had the passenger car, so we all got on the truck with fire uh, firewood and everything. Mm -hmm. And all up the cover of age, we will sing the Japanese song, popular Japanese songs, you know, all the way through in the back of the truck. Mm -hmm. And then when we get there, we make a big bonfire, and then we have a winter bay, and then of course we have the uh, marshmallow to toasted marshmallows, and, and then we'll walk. Not all of us, but we'll walk on the breakwater up to the lighthouse, well, you know, not all of us, walk to walk and come back. Mm -hmm. and that's, a, that's, they say it's about a mile and a half one way. Anyway, after we get back, we well make another battle bonfire at Winter Bay. Oh, that was some deal, you know. Oh my gosh, we all look forward to that. Oh boy. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, it was really, a, you know, a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. The good old days. Yeah, I you know. Yeah. Old days. Uh -huh. so we only had radio and the phonographs. That's about it. Right. <laughs> so, and the New Year's, we used to younger one. We used to go to Newport. You know, all around. You know, uh -huh. we used to travel around. Uh huh. Yes. And uh, oh yes, uh, winter time. Once a year, we used to go to Big Pines. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, we have a toboggan. You know, mm -hmm. right. You probably remember the uh, when the red car train was going through oh, the yes, South Bay. Oh, yes, red car train and yellow car. We used to take a yellow car from Englewood mm -hmm. to Broadway mm -hmm. and used to shop at the Walker department store. That was a huge store, mm -hmm. Walker. And, of course, Englewood, they have Crest and the Woolworth and all out of there. Mm -hmm. It was nice. Do you still remember, though, the red car that went down Hawthorne Boulevard? Oh yes, uh huh. And you, you used to go through uh, Gardena, you know, Vermont. Oh yes, Vermont yeah. to uh, Redondo, I think. Right. There, there was two there. routes. There was uh, down Vermont right. and then down Hawthorne Boulevard. That's right. Mm -hmm. Used to go there. Yes. Anyway, I used to take the yellow car mm -hmm. from Englewood. Mm -hmm. I think it was uh, five, number five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it takes us to you know, a uh, Broadway. I got to ride the yellow car the very last day it ran. Oh, you did? When I was a kid. Oh, yeah. my mom <laughs> took me on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. That uh, streetcar was something. Uh -huh. And then, when the streetcar went out of business, uh, you know, with uh, Vermont, you know, the tiles they have a lot of rocks on there, you know, and then they have the tile on there, and the railroad on. Yeah. We, I used to go over there to the Vermont. From my, you know where I live, and all the rocks in the driveway. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> that came from there. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's recycling. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, 
I remember that. Oh my god. On oh, no, a Model T Ford, you know. Oh yeah. Do have Model T Ford? Uh -huh. You got that. Oh gosh, that was really something. Yeah. Uh, what else was it now? Anyway, uh, that's about it uh, that I could remember. Well, that's a good story. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I'll save all this. Uh, yeah. yep. and people will be anyway, looking at it. We had our fun. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. yeah. And then, you know, that was a nice community. Yeah. And December 7th. Yeah, everything ended. Everything yeah. went up and ended. Yeah. Oh, okay. The world changed. Yeah, all mm. changed. Mm. Yeah. Well, I thank you, Bill. You're welcome. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'll sign off for now. You can say uh, say goodbye. <laughs> okay, no, thank you, Bill. Right. You're welcome. I'm glad I was able to do something about this. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. Okay, here we go. That is really something.